Hi everyone. And uh, today we will be learning the various techniques such as irrigation, control of competing organisms, controlling of pests and diseases, and biological control to increase the agriculture yield. By the end of the lesson, you will be able to analyze the alternative methods used to solve the pest, disease, and weight problems. Let's see how irrigation increases the crop production. Many parts of the world have insufficient or irregular rainfall, which makes the crop growing difficult. Irrigation brings a regular supply of water to the crop field. Why is irrigation important? Irrigation helps to grow the agriculture crops where the rainfall is less or in dry areas. It suppresses weight growth in grain fields. It also increases the production. Our water is transformed from the areas of storage to the field through canals, example the hot desert, or dry all year so that growing crop is impossible without irrigation, uh, such as in Egypt, Middle East, or California in the USA. Savanna and the monsoon region is dry during the dry season with the temperature or high crops are grown with the help of irrigation uh, mainly in east africa india and pakistan now let's see how the water can be used wisely many parts of the world have a regular rainfall uh, so rainwater can be collected from the field to run off or from the rooftop of the building to use later. And farmers can get access to the underground uh, supplies such as uh, boreholes. And water can be stored underground or covered sources for future because less water loss but, expen but expensive to construction. Water stored in the reservoir can be used, but water loss through evaporation is more. So the cheapest option, the transportation of water uh, through canals is extremely wasteful because dry soil will absorb much of the water before it reaches the plant. However, the construction of uh, canals is a good option to transport the water to the field. And even the solid pipes harder to construct but less prone to water loss. Now we can see what is sprinkler irrigation and what are its advantages and disadvantages. Sprinkler irrigation is a method of applying water in a controlled manner, in a way similar to rainfall. It is a device used to irrigate the agriculture crops, lawns, landscapes, and other areas. The advantages of sprinkler irrigation are it is affordable and easy to set up, its uniform distribution of water with high efficiency, and the loss of water is uh, minimum. It's accurate and easy measurement of distributed water. It shows and it reduces the labor cost and it's easy to operate. Then the disadvantages are the initial cost is high. The water must be clean and free of sand, debris and dissolved salts. And it cannot be used in a windy climate. Uh, the water lands on leaves and the soil, evaporates very quickly. The second type of irrigation is the clay pot irrigation system. A clay, a clay pot irrigation is an ancient method of irrigation. This provides constant drip irrigation by allowing the water to sweep through unglazed terracotta. The advantages of these uh, clay pot irrigation are number one, in this method only the area near the pot gets irrigated, not the whole area. And number two, evaporation of water is minimum in this method. And number three, uh, water sweepage below the ground is also minimum quantity. And number four, it needs minimum technical knowledge.
So when you talk about the disadvantages of this clay pot irrigation, number one, and this method irrigation is possible in a limited area, and number two, it's not um, suitable for every crop, and number three, it's only favorable for the permanent plants, and number four, large labor cost. The third type of irrigation is trickle drip irrigation. A trickle drip irrigation is a system of crop irrigation involving the controlled delivery of water directly to the individual plants through a network of tubes or pipes. This is also known as drip irrigation. The advantages of the trickle drip irrigation is number one, water is placed directly at the base of the plant and number two, reduced water usage. And number three, yield of the crop or maximum. And number four, water is used at maximum level. And number five, uh, soil infiltration capacity increased. And number six, operational cost is, is low. And number seven, the wastage of fertilizers or lessen. In this method, and when you talk about the disadvantages, uh, its initial cost is high and it may cause uh, clogging if water is not filtered correctly. And number three, a salinity problem. And number four, uh, high skills are required. And number five, good can block the tubes. The fourth type of irrigation is flood irrigation. Flood irrigation is an ancient method of irrigating the crops. Uh, water is delivered to the field by the ditch or pipe or some other means. In this type of irrigation, and the advantages are it's inexpensive and it covers a large area quickly and uh, labor suspension is required for the application and when you talk about the disadvantages it's uneven distribution of water to the crops and little control over the sub little control of water supplied to the crops and a lot of water is lost through evaporation and the last point is the leveling of land is required which may be you know very expensive The fifth strategy is the control of competing organisms. For a period of 100 years, farmers have lost large proportion of the crops due to weeds, pests and diseases. Prior to the instruction of chemical controls, the crop failure was approximately 70%. The crop eating insects can be destroyed by spraying the insecticides. Weeds, the unwanted plant that grow between the crops, that would compete with the crops for the light and the nutrients, and it can be killed by herbicides. Fungi can also be controlled by fungicides. So why the weeds need to be controlled? Number one, because it decreases the yield of the crop. Number two, weeds compete with the crops for nutrients, light and water, so it is important to manage them. Number three, they decrease the fertility of the soil. Number four, it might be poisonous either to livestock or to humans. Number five, it makes the cultivation difficult, tangling up tools and clogging up machines. Number six, it can block the drainage system with excessive growth. And number seven, it can be a source of pests and insects that attack the crop. Now let's see some tips to use the herbicides safely and effectively. Number one, avoid using on windy days and near the water bodies. And number two, Avoid using on time of uh, heavy rains and extreme sunlight. Number three, mornings 
and evenings are usually better times for the day for a weed killer application. And number four, there is an environment risk if they are not applied correctly. They affect the living organism in the areas, apparently affecting the food chain and the food web. Number five, the farmers need to wear personal protective equipment. The last strategy is biological control. It's an alternative or uh, methods used to solve the pest disease and weight problems. The biological control is a management of pests through the use of their natural enemies, the use of living organism to control the pest, a natural enemy such as a parasite predator is introduced into the environment of pest, encouraged to multiply and become more effective in reducing the number of pests. When you talk about the advantages of the biological control, it's, there is no usage of chemicals. Biological control has an adverse effect on human health or the environment and it's specific to particular pest and it can provide long-term solution to a pest problem and there is no environment contamination. The disadvantages are the predator you introduce may not eat the pest and the predator could eat useful uh, species and the predator's population uh, may increase and get out of control. Uh, the predator may uh, not stay in an area where it is needed. The biological control operates over a large area, cannot be limited to individual properties or paddock. So what is biological control and why do we need it? See, the most farmers use chemical methods to control the pest problems. There are a number of disadvantages to this method. Number one, the chemicals may be non-specific and kill the beneficial insects. Number two, the pests may develop resistance to the pesticide. And number three, the pesticides may enter the food chain. Food chains accumulate and harm other organisms too. How the farmers can reduce the water loss from, from their crops? Number one, by providing them shelter, either shading them from intense heat of the sun or use wind break to reduce the wind speed, which apparently help to reduce the rate of transpiration from the leaves. And number two, covering the ground with a polythene sheet or a natural compost layer that is a mulch reduce the water loss from the soil. Now we will be learning about the problems of usage of chemicals. As in early 1960s, biologists highlighted the impact of pesticides on food chain and food web. A reduction in insects means there is less food for the predators, that is the small birds or reptiles. Consequently, or less food for the top predators, that is example the birds. Pesticides indirectly affect the top predators. The top predators have the higher concentration of toxic chemicals. Usage of chemical fertilizers have a long-term effect on the plants, animals, soil and humans. The chemical fertilizers not only kills the pest insects, but it also kills the microorganisms in the soil, which in turn will make the soil useless where nothing can grow. In the next lesson, we will be learning the techniques to increase the agriculture yield, such as um, efficiency gain through the mechanization, selective breeding, genetic modification, Controlling the crop environment and controlling the whole environment.